I've got a new rad in my pad. It's got some pretty heavy flow and it shouldn't leak, but if it does, well, that's what warranties are for. The H150i Pro RGB is Corsair's first 360mm radiator. Took them long enough to figure out that length is important. And if new things get you pumped, you'll find that both this unit and the H115i Pro RGB use the new 6th generation pump from Asetek, which has a slightly smaller block and cold plate design. Said cold plate is made of copper and the radiator is aluminum, which means if you're using a liquid metal thermal interface material, you won't have to worry about any sort of corrosion to the block. Galvanic corrosion due to the mixed metals shouldn't be a problem either since there are elements in the liquid to prevent such rotten luck. I've owned two of Corsair's H110i closed loop coolers over the years, the liquids haven't changed, and they're both still going strong. Out of the box, you'll find all sorts of mounting hardware to accommodate pretty much all relatively standard and recent sockets, including Intel's LGA 115X, 1366, 2011, 2011 V3, and 2066, and AMD's AM2, AM3, AM4, FM1, FM2, but not TR4. Corsair plans to make a bracket available for purchase sometime early this year, so if you're rocking Threadripper, you'll have a bit of time to let your thread ripped wallet recover. You've also got three static pressure optimized magnetic levitation fans focused around silence with a max RPM of 1600 and a user manual for coordinating your installation. The maglev fans don't have any LEDs, but if that's something you want to hear or not hear more of, you can check out this video up top. As for the installation, the toolless mounting makes it really easy. Getting the pump on took me the better half of a minute and it only took so long because I can't read. The pump itself has the Corsair logo covered by a glossy acrylic piece at its center, surrounded by a first diffuser for a kind of ringed aesthetic, with a light gray border around the perimeter and a second diffuser directly underneath to illuminate the surrounding area. Attached to that, you'll find flexible sleeve tubing that I particularly like. It's fairly simple to route, it doesn't seem to kink easily, and I'm seeing no issues with RAM clearance on my Maximus 9 Hero motherboard. Additionally, you've got a bunch of cables snaking their way out. One that splits into a 3-pin connector to go to your motherboard's CPU fan or pump header, another end that splits further into 4-pin connectors to go to your 3 included maglev fans, and a SATA power cable. The last cable you'll find is a micro USB to go to your motherboard's internal USB header for controlling your cooler through Corsair Link. Moving over to Corsair Link, we have a lot of things to play with. Clicking on the LED icon in the H150i or H115i Pro tile, depending on what you have installed, will bring you to your RGB options, where you can choose from Static, Blink, Color Pulse, Color Shift, Rainbow, and Temperature. All animated effects allow for up to seven colors of your choosing and speed control in three steps. If you're looking for function, boogie over to the Configure tab and search for the pump. You'll have three options here, quiet, balanced, and performance, which cannot be configured any further. Moving over to the fans next, we see many more options, like zero RPM mode, which makes your fans explode. Not really, it turns the fans off if your liquid temperature is below 45 Celsius, so that's pretty cool. And then you've got quiet, balanced, performance, and max, which cannot be altered, but custom fixed RPM and fixed percent, which can, allowing you to fine tune your fan speeds to pretty much whatever you'd like. The group dropdown lets you specify which temperature the fans slave to, and finally, the notifications tab will allow for further precision tuning, like setting minimum and maximum temperatures, spitting warnings using the LEDs, running a file when certain thresholds are hit, or even shutting down your computer in the event of a system-wide catastrophe. As for performance, I've got three all-in-ones available, the Deepcool Captain 240EX, the Corsair H110i, and the Corsair H150i Pro, which are 240, 280, and 360 millimeters respectively. This is not necessarily meant to say that one is definitely better than another, since there are a number of factors to consider, like price, performance, and silence, for example. So, the processor on the chopping block today is a deleted i7-7700K processor clocked to 4.9 GHz at 1.4 volts. Our ambient temperature will be normalized to 25 degrees Celsius. Testing all coolers running at max speeds with their stock fans, we see that the H150i Pro falls just a bit cooler than the Corsair H110i, but in terms of noise, only puts out about 48 dBA, which is respectable compared to the H110i's 67.3 roar. Note that the pre-applied thermal compound does pretty well, and swapping over to the Arctic MX2 thermal interface material leaves us within margin of error in terms of improvement. Testing each cooler with noise levels normalized to 45 dBA in a room where the floor is 41 puts the Corsair ML fans at 1300 RPM, yielding an average temperature of about 60.05 degrees Celsius. This chart shows that size really does matter, and we do see some pretty significant differences because of it. With all coolers set to be as quiet as possible, we see they're all pretty close to each other in terms of sound, and you'll be hard-pressed to hear a difference between any of them, though the H150i Pro does perform the best, again due to its larger radiator size. 
The Deepcool Captain 240EX falls behind in all instances, but being the smallest and least expensive radiator of the bunch at around 100 US dollars at the time of doing this video, it can't really be blamed. The H110i performs well for its price of approximately 115 US dollars, but do note that maximum performance will also mean maximum hearing loss. But maybe that was the plan. If you're deaf, everything is maximum silent. But on that note, for those of you who have owned any Corsair AIOs in the past, you'll be happy to hear these new units finally feature a quiet startup. No more jet engines upon pressing the power button. So while they did fix that issue, there are a few other things I'd like to address. Firstly, I'd like double the fan connectors on it. I'm aware that this unit is supposed to be quiet and doubling the quantity of fans using a push-pull configuration blows that goal out of the water, but I'd still like that option anyway. On the topic of options, Corsair's original ML120 fans max out at around 2400 RPM. The ones included here top off at 1600. Again, optimized for a low noise operation, but when I see Pro added to something, I kind of expect emphasis around maximum performance. This might have been better marketed as the H150i RGB. But speaking of noise, the pump does have an audible, high-pitched whirring sound on the balanced and performance settings. Putting the case panel back on makes this inaudible to my ear, but some of you are probably more sensitive to that than I. Aside from that, I'm not a huge fan of the gray bit, I think I'd prefer it in black for a slightly more subtle look, and some other lighting effects might be pretty cool. For example, you've got two diffusing rings and a logo that light up. Individual control over each area would be pretty lit, in addition to other animations like maybe a ripple, or a marquee, or a delayed pulse between the zones, I don't know, something flashy. All that said, the cooler comes in at a super spoopy 170 US dollars for the H150i Pro RGB and 140 for the H115i Pro RGB. For that much of a price tag, the RGB ML fans would have been appreciated, but it's not a huge deal to me since the price already seems pretty fair in my opinion. Whether or not that price is worth it to you depends on how much you value silence. The focus here is around how low it can go and how quiet is the riot. Compared to coolers like the H110i, which performs really similarly to the NZXT Kraken X62, you may not see a significant boost in performance to justify the price premium, but you'll probably hear it. Or not. And so that's all I have to say about that. Like, dislike, comment, subscribe, share, leave me questions if you've got them. Thanks for watching. My name is Steven, and I am a little dim. Bye bye. I've got a new rat in my pad. It's got. <laughs> Period jokes are only funny in very controlled frequencies. This unit and the H115i. Wrong stress. And the H115i Pro RGB. I keep forgetting that there's an RGB on that. And the H115i Pro. I either stress the wrong thing or I forget there's an RGB in there. The pump itself has the Corsair logo covered by a gla 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 glossy. Not glassy. I mean, it, it kind of looks glassy, but it's glossy. The pump itself has the Corsair logo covered by a glossy acrylic piece that it's set. Swapping over to the Arctic MX2 thermal interface material leaves us with something that I almost didn't want to, shouldn't have said. Not that I shouldn't have, I, it's just, I was thinking of a different word and reading a, another different word and it, never mind. And so that's all I have to say with that. Bleh. Bleh. I don't usually mess that up anymore because I have a lot of practice with it. Sometimes my mouth still gets stuck. And so that's all I have to say about that. And so that's bleh. That, this, today's a rough day. Like, dislike, comment, subscribe, share, leave me questions if you got them. Thanks for watching. My name is... I, I, I pointed too early. <laughs> share, leave me questions if you got them. Thanks for watching. My name is Steve. I, I pointed too early again.